He may be a precinct worker or president. He may give his talents at the courthouse, the state house, the White House. He may be a civil servant or a senator, a candidate or a campaign worker, a winner or a loser. But he must be a participant and not a spectator. My name is Matthew Miller, and I'd like to thank you guys for listening to my question. i got to say, Americans have went through a lot of senseless wars with Vietnam, with Iraq, and with the drug war especially. And, you know, it just seems that we innocent men and women just seem to be trying to, you know, su I mean, we're suffering for the financial gain and stability of, um, you know, of our government officials. What can, what can you guys do to ensure that you guys are actually looking out for our interest instead of your own financial gain? Well, let me let me answer the question. Um, as 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 hard as it is for for a lot of people to understand, not many people get rich in politics. Uh, I mean, most public servants, and I'm not. There are exceptions to this. Most public servants do it because they believe in their country, their state, their city, and they want to help. And uh, I'm the last person to defend some of the things you see going on, some of the things you see going on in Washington, D.C. right now is wrong. Some of the influence of special interests and lobbyists, et cetera, is wrong. Um, so my answer, my answer to your question is, you know, the reason you need to be involved in this whole process is because you, you're the only one who can judge. You know, you can listen to people talk about their ideas, you know, what we should do about Iraq, what we should do about the economy, what we should do about health care, all these things that are important. You're the only one who can judge whether they're telling you the truth, whether they're honest, whether they're sincere. And my own view about it is that, particularly in national elections, to a lesser extent in other elections, these elections are generally not about a specific issue. They're about character. They're about integrity and trust and strength. You know, whether you, when you go to participate and vote or campaign, whatever you're going to do, uh, you trust the people who you want to lead. And I have to say, you know, I hear a lot of people, a lot of politicians and political pundits criticizing, well, the voters don't understand enough about, you know, what so-and-so's health care plan is. They don't understand enough about. I actually think that voters understand what's important. You know, they understand that what they want is they want leaders they can trust leaders they look up to and respect, leaders their families will look up to, and to go to your question, leaders that will act in their interest, they being the voters' interest, and not in their own personal interest. And I think those are judgments that, that only you can make. No one else can make them. You know, we could have a debate about health care. We could have it right now. And you'd hear the, the different sides about what, what ought to be done about health care, but you're the only one who can judge whether we're sincere about it. You're the only one who can judge whether we can be trusted, whether this is something we'll actually try to do when we're in office. So that's the reason your participation is so important. You know, I mentioned uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson a little earlier, wrote the Declaration of Independence when he was 33. I want to remind you the first four sentences in that document. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them to another, and to assume among the powers of the earth a separate but equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of, of, opinions of mankind require that they set forth their differences. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, Governments are instituted amongst men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Young man, we consent to the government that we have, uh, which is why Generation Engage, which I at first thought was a, a singles dating service, um, <laughs> it's not the way I came, um, <laughs> is so important. Uh, young people your age vote less than any other demographic age group in America. And yet it's many of your peers that are serving in Iraq now. Now I'm not, I don't think John or either I came to debate the, the rightness or wrongness of the war in Iraq. But 
the government derives its just powers from you. And your consent is delivered at the voting box every four years or every two years. And if you're not involved and if you're not participating, and I don't mean just vote, uh, this republic requires that you deliver an enlightened vote, not swayed by emotions or anger or frustration. And let me speak to that for a minute, because in his question there was an undertone, and I don't know the young man, I hope I get a chance to cross paths with him someday, there was an undertone of, of anger and frustration. Um, Thomas Paine said that moderation and temper is always a virtue, moderation in principle is always a vice, and what that means is we have too much anger in political discourse in America today, and, and John has certainly uh, encountered a lot of that. Cling to your beliefs with passion and do not surrender them. I personally believe compromise is a tremendously overvalued uh, concept in America today. But do, uh, do so with civility and courteous and assume that the people on the other side of the debate have the best of intentions. Anger in politics drives angry emotions, which drives bad public policy. And too many public policy debates are decided based on ranting and raving and anger and ill-informed people. Uh, and I will get back to what John said in a minute ago. All these problems that we talk about, so many of them are beyond your control. Concentrate on the thing that you can control, and that is the quality of your education. And, and look at what's happening globally and make up your mind. You know what? I might, it might be good for me to learn a foreign language while I'm in school. Chinese might be a good choice. Uh, learn finance. That's the one gap in my education I wish I could go back and fill. If you understand money, how to get it, how to use it, you will be an invaluable member of the workforce. If you, have, if you can sell something, you will, you will be employed. You may not be employed by the same company all the time, but if you have personal qualities and you can sell things, concentrate on your strengths and broaden your education. Learn a foreign language, learn finance, learn the things, develop the skills that are going to make you indispensable. And then no matter where the jobs go, or who the employer is, you'll have a better chance of being in the workforce. And, and work is an American ethic. It is a unique part of our heritage. And it needs to be valued and uplifted. And preparing people for it uh, is a government responsibility. But ultimately, it's your responsibility because this country was founded on personal responsibility. Educate yourself and make sure the education you give yourself is well-rounded. Learning a technical skill, learning how to program a computer is a great skill, but make sure it's a broad enough thing so that if computer technology goes somewhere else, you have a broad enough skill set where you can be flexible and orient yourself to another line of work.